Welcome to another Mythologer video. Do you still use coins? Not much, right? In fact, many experts predict that coins will be abolished altogether in the not too distant future. Heads or tails will be dead and gone. Very sad. <laughs> but there's this really beautiful change making mathematics that I've been meaning to show you since day one of Mythologer. And pretty soon there'll be no point. So before I lose my chance entirely, I'll sneak in a quick video on coin maths. In particular, the goal of today's video is to answer one of the most burning questions on shoppers' minds. How many ways are there to make change for one Google that is 10 to the power of $100? The answer to this question is very surprising and the explanation for the answer even more so. Promise. In particular, I'll use infinite series in a very ingenious way to count that huge but definitely finite number of ways to make change for a Google. And believe it or not, all this change making maths will actually stay very applicable even in the future without coins. I'll come back to that point at the end of the video. Okay, a little mathematical warm up to get us going. Ready? No coins up my non-existing sleeves. <laughs> Have a look at the monster product over there. First bracket 1 plus x plus x squared all the way to x to the power of 100. Second bracket again all the way to x to the power of 100 but the exponents going up in multiples of 5. There 5, 10, 15, 100 and so on. Multiples of 10 in the bracket of the next exponent right there 10, 20, all the way to 100. Next one is there 25 all the way to 100 then 50 and finally to little bracket 1 plus x to the power of 100. Cool! Now expand this monster product. Go on, I'll wait. Or maybe not. <laughs> but a piece of cake for a computer. There that's the output. So the result is 1 plus x plus x squared plus goes on for a while <laughs> They're all the way to x to the power of 600. What a monster. Now for the magic. Let's wave our mathematical wand and zero in on the number in front of x to the power of 100. There, 293. Big deal. <laughs> Just another number, right? Wrong. 293 is exactly the number of ways to make change for a dollar using standard US coins. Those ones over there. 1 cent, 5, 10, 25, 50 and well, 100 cents. How does this work? Well, those numbers definitely feature prominently in the product we started with. There. The exponent in the different factors are all the multiples of the six different numbers up to 100. All clear? No? Well, no problem. Let's have a closer look. Let's start small. Let's figure out what amount of money we can make with three one cent coins and two three cent coins and in how many different ways we can make those amounts. Okay, first just using the one cent coins, what can we do there? Tricky, hmm? <laughs> not really. <laughs> yep, we can make one cent, two cents and three cents. Well actually by being really stingy we can also make zero cents. Right? Same with our three cent coins. No coins give zero cents. One gives three cents and two gives six cents. Now here comes the first really cool bit. To get everything possible using both types of coins we simply visually multiply the two sums. So there multiply term by term and <laughs> pretty magical and pretty obvious that this will give all possible ways of combining up to three one cent coins with up to two three cent coins. Now just tidy up a bit. All those extra nothings in the top row are really superfluous so let's zap them. Neat huh? We've translated finding all those combinations into algebra. Now to find out what amounts we've made, let's add up. For example, 1 plus 1 plus 3 plus 3 is 8 and so on. But how can we do this adding up automatically? Well, the way we've pictured things makes it look like we are multiplying those coins rather than adding, right? Here's a neat idea. 
what if we use powers? Can you see why? Well, products of powers translate into sums of the exponents. Have a look. Mm -hmm. So the exponent 8 is exactly the coin sum we noted earlier. Okay, let's do this everywhere. There. Okay, now let's add up. Mm -hmm. And everywhere else. Mm. So there we got 3 in two different ways and those two ways are automatically recorded by our weird coin algebra. There goes the 2. Mm -hmm. Same thing here, two ways to make 6. Another 2 there, okay. The black circle up there stands for nothing, just 0. And x to the power of 0 is 1. So wrapping it all up, what does this polynomial tell us? Hmm. What it says is that with 3 1 cent coins and 2 3 cent coins, we can make 1 cent in one way, okay, 2 cents in one way, 3 cents in two ways, and so on. And of course, we also get that one way of making 0 cents there, right at the beginning. And remember, this is the strange coin product we started with. Or, swapping the coins for powers, this is what we started with. Pretty cool, huh? And it's easy to see that this works for any combination of coins. For example, if we add a single 10 cent coin to the mix, the product that will do the trick is this one there. Okay, back to the product we started with. Can you decipher the product now and figure out the corresponding coins? Well, the first bracket means we have 100 one cent coins to play with, a dollar's worth. Okay. Next bracket we have a dollar's worth of 5 cent coins, then a dollar's worth of 10 cent coins and so on. There, 25, 50, 100. Got it? But what if we include more coins? Well, remember we were asking about the number of ways to make change for a dollar. And for that question, including more coins can't make any difference, right? For example, the greatest number of 1 cent coins we can possibly use is 100. So using more 1 cent coins than 100 with which we began won't give any more ways to make change. And this means that the coefficient of x to the power of 100, that 293, is exactly the number of ways to make change for a dollar. Pretty damn ingenious, isn't it? <laughs> Love this stuff. What else do all these numbers over there tell us? Well, let's have a look at the previous terms. This tells us that there are 252 ways to make change for 99 cents. And also 252 ways to make change for 98 cents. In general, all the coefficients for powers up to 100 will give the exact number of ways to make change for those corresponding amounts. For the powers beyond 100 cents, the coefficients are lower than the total number of ways to make change. For example, that 292 that goes with 101 cents doesn't account for the one way of making change with 101 one cent coins. Here at the end, only one way of making change for 600 cents is covered using all our coins. Of course, there will be zillions more. Okay, to finish this chapter, here are some challenges for you. First, how many ways are there to make change for a dollar if we don't use 100 cent coins? That's an easy one, right? <laughs> okay, now for a slightly more challenging question and a nice aha moment. Say you've got one 1 cent coin, one 2 cent coin, one 4 cent coin and one 8 cent coin. What cent amounts can you make with these four different coins and in how many different ways? For maximum or high impact, try to solve this puzzle using the weird product I showed you earlier. Well, what if, as well, you use one 16 cent coin, one 32 cent coin and so on. One each of all the other infinitely many power of two coins. Leave your answers in the comments. What's this up there? Yep, the multiplication table. 
You are of course very familiar with it and there is nothing that you don't know about it, right? Well let's see. Mental mathematicians and lightning calculators will memorize well beyond the 10 times table. They are looking at something like this. Have you taken this bird's eye view before? The extended multiplication table exhibits some curious patterns. Can you see the different shades of grey? What are those? Well, let me highlight the different regions that are jumping out at us. There. What's the explanation for these regions? You've got it? No? Well, let's zoom in on one of the edges between regions. Okay, zoom, zoom, zoom. <laughs> ah, so the regions are formed by the products with different numbers of digits. And the edges are where we jump from a certain number of digits to the next number. Makes sense. And what about the shape of the boundary curves? Ring a bell? Yep, they're pretty hyperbolic. One over xy looking, aren't they? And it's actually really easy to see that these curves are approximately hyperbolic. Right? If this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis, then this border between three-digit and four-digit numbers is approximated by the curve with equations x times y equals the smallest four-digit number 1000. Or y is equal to 1000 over x. Hyperbolic, great. Anyway, there's a lesson to be learned. Even if we know how something works in principle and we're familiar with the little examples, taking things to telescopic extremes may produce some real surprises. This also turns out to be true for the change giving puzzle. Let me show you. Remember we figured out there were 293 ways to make change for a dollar. What about making change for ten dollars? Want to take a guess? Two million and a bit ways to make change for ten dollars. Let's see how this plays out when we go even bigger. There, there, there. I'm getting pretty big. <laughs> yep, the numbers are huge. But can you also see a strange pattern emerging? Let me highlight the pattern for you. There, amazing, right? From one thousand dollars on, we get the same numbers separated by strings of threes and zeros. It turns out that this extends to infinity and along the way there we get the answer to our original question. What is the number of ways to make change for Google Dollars? Here is the monster answer. Ooh. <laughs> Very impressive and totally unexpected, isn't it? Take a moment to let this sink in. Got it? Right. Actually, what I just showed you is impressive in another way. How did I calculate those huge numbers in the first place? Hmm. Well, in principle, our product trick as well as other brute force enumeration tricks will work for any amount of dollars. So to apply the product trick, you just have to adjust the maximum exponent. Therefore, two dollars we would use this larger product. But as we go larger and larger, even the computer will quickly begin to get scared at the amount of calculation to be done. So here is a double challenge for my programmer friends. Try to come up with an efficient program that computes the number of ways to make change for full dollar amounts and then use it to continue this sequence over there. For your program anything goes. You don't have to use the product trick if you think you've got a better idea. Tell us about your discoveries in the comments. Also, let us know how far you can push things before your program and computing setup starts to take over an hour to produce the next answer. How close to two times a Google did you get? Not very close, I promise. <laughs> okay, so computers get us so far. How far does our brain get us? Let's find out together. Okay. Our goal is to prove that crazy formula for Google change. But before we get into it, I think I'd better highlight two basic facts to make sure we're all on the same page. Fact 1. The formula for the sum of an infinite geometric series. Very familiar, right? That one has come out in mythology videos mm, about a Google times. <laughs> and remember that the formula only works for values of x between minus 1 and 1. For fact 2, we quickly have to remind ourselves about binomial coefficients. That n choose k thing. Probably easiest to just write on an example like 9 choose 4. Alright, the pattern's clear, right? 4 factors going up 
in the denominator and four factors going down in the numerator. Also, if the number at the bottom is zero, then the binomial coefficient is equal to one. Now fact two is this formula here. Let's bring it in there, ponder it for a moment. You've got it. Well, it's possible to prove the second formula up on top by raising both sides of the first formula to a power of n. It's obvious that this works on the right side, there. The orange is the nth power of the green. To show from scratch that the left side of the second formula is the nth power of the first formula is also not terribly hard. Thus quickly, for n is equal to one, all the binomial coefficients get a zero at the bottom and so are equal to one. And so for n is equal to one, the second formula is really just the first formula. Nice. Maybe give squaring and cubing the left side of the first formula a go to prove the formula for n is equal to two and n is equal to three. Actually, there's also a much, much easier calculus-based proof. Simply differentiate the first formula below n minus one times on both sides and you will arrive at the second formula on top. If you are comfortable with calculus, you should definitely treat yourself to proving the formula this way. Anyway, for what follows, we'll really only need the special case n is equal to six. So I might as well highlight that for you now. Okay, so when I spring this on you in a minute or two, you won't be surprised, right? Now with these two formulas under our belt, we are ready to explain those long strings of threes and zeros in the numbers of ways to make change for powers of $10. To do this, let's see how far we can push the product trick. Then we'll push a little further. As we've seen, the product over there gives the number of ways of making change for a dollar. Upping the power from 100 to 200 gets us the number of ways to make change for $2 and so on. So let's think big and take this all the way to infinity. So expanding this crazy product should give us all the ways of making chains for all possible amounts. But how can we expand this product? Well, have a look at the first factor. Looks familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> Our first formula tells us that this factor is equal to one over one minus x. Hmm. <laughs> Here's the second factor. Aha, <laughs> do you see the trick? Yep, this is just the first formula again, but with x to the power of five in the role of x, right? Plugging x to the power of five into the first formula gives this. There, plugging in, gives this. And of course, all the other factors in our crazy product are equal to similar fractions. Which means that our crazy product is equal to this product of fractions. Okay, that looks a lot simpler than the crazy product, but does it help? Well, not so clear, right? The idea is to massage this expression a bit until all six denominators are the same. After that, it turns out we can apply our second formula. Let me show you how this is done using some algebra autopilot. Don't worry too much about the details. If you get the general idea of what's going on, that's plenty.
don't you just love algebra autopilot? And things are now all primed to use our second formula and apply it to the bit in orange. There, let's just do it. Cool. And now a bit more massaging. First, take a deep breath, cross your fingers and expand the big product in the middle. Just brute force, nothing ingenious going on there. Okay, <laughs> degree 81 polynomial, 82 terms. Don't get to deal with something like that every day. And yes, it's scary, but remember, we started with a big product of infinite sums. So all in all, maybe count our blessings. Okay, the name Z has served its purpose. Let's switch back to x to the power of five. How are you going? Hanging in there? Well, almost there, promise. Let's remind ourselves what it is that we're looking at. What we have here is the original crazy product consisting of six infinite sums massaged into a product consisting of the two finite sums at the top and an infinite sum at the bottom. Okay, now let me show you how you can derive from this massaged sum a formula for the number of ways to make change for full dollar amounts. After that, I'll use this formula to explain the mysterious expanding strings of threes. To begin, let's figure out the number of ways to make change for four dollars, that is 400 cents. For this, we have to pinpoint the different ways to pick one term each from the three factors whose powers of x combine into x to the power of 400. Now, one way sticks out, right? One times one times x to the power of 400 is x to the power of 400. If that was the only way to produce x to the power of 400, then there would be exactly those blue nine choose five ways to make change for 400 cents. But there are others. Take a look at the second factor in the middle. This factor contains four terms with multiples of 100 as exponents. There are those ones. <laughs> that means we can also make x to the power of 400 like this. One times x to the power of 100 times x to the power of 300 equals x to the power of 400. Here's another way. And another way and another way. But that's it. Maybe pause the video and think about this for a moment. What I just pulled out are the only ways to produce x to the power of 400. But this means that the number of ways to make change for 400 cents is this. But actually there was nothing special about $4 or 400 cents. Exactly the same reasoning shows that the general formula for k dollars or k times 100 cents, the 100 is really important here, <laughs> is this. Actually that's not quite true. This is the formula for all k greater than 3. The formula doesn't work for n is equal to 1, 2 and 3, at least not straight away. Challenge for you. Why doesn't the formula work for those small dollar amounts? And how can we adapt the formula to make it also work for these amounts? Leave your answers in the comments. Now, just a bit more algebra autopilot to hammer this formula in the simplest possible form. Pretty amazing. Not the prettiest polynomial ever, but after all the gymnastics with infinities flying this way and that, that's a surprisingly simple formula. Impressed? I know you are. <laughs> All right, now for the final dash to the peak. Let's use this formula to explain the expanding strings of three. Okay, a bit more algebra autopilot. Okay, ready for some grand finale magic? Great, sub in k is equal to 100,000. 
then all those powers of k on the far right will also be powers of 10. And so we'll just be moving the decimal points of these numbers on the right by different amounts. That is where all those threes come from. What a nice aha moment, don't you think? Okay, mission accomplished. Next time you have to make change for a Google Dollars, you know what to do. <laughs> Let me just end with three remarks. First remark, you may think that with coins soon to become an endangered species, all this nice maths I've been talking about today will soon become obsolete. That's not the case at all. In fact, some of you may already have realized that change making maths is really part of the incredibly applicable theory of integer partitions, the topic of my recent video on Euler's pentagonal number theorem. Imagine that you have an unlimited supply of coins of all possible integer denominations, one cent coins, two cent coins, three cent coins, etc. Then the question of how many ways you can make change for n cents is exactly the same as asking in how many different ways you can write the number n as a sum of positive integers. Well, that may still sound like no big deal, but it is. To find out why this question is so important and why Euler and Ramanujan are featured in the logo of the video over there, check out the video. Second remark, the trick of first interpreting a sequence of numbers as the coefficients of an infinite power series and then investigating the sequence by manipulating the power series is very powerful mathematics indeed. If you'd like to find out more what's possible in this respect, Google the term generating function. Of course, we'll also revisit this circle of ideas again in the future. I've also included some links in the description of this video. Final remark. I first learned about change making maths from the brilliant book Concrete Mathematics by mathematical heavyweights Ron Graham and Donald Knuth and Oren Patashnik. An absolutely beautiful and fun must read by some genuine giants. <laughs> A book all about combining continuous maths, that is calculus, with discrete maths. The result? Concrete Mathematics. Seemed fun in the title. I've never met Donald Knuth or Oren Patashnik, but I do know Ron Graham. That is, I did know Ron Graham. Ron passed away last year, aged 84. Ron was an absolute amazing mathematician and an all round great guy with many, many interests and accomplishments in and outside mathematics. You may be familiar with Graham's number, which is a lot bigger than the Google, <laughs> or even a Googleplex. Or if you're a juggler, you may recognize him as one of the past presidents of the International Jugglers Association. Anyway, let me take the opportunity to dedicate this video to Ron Graham. And that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm looking forward to all your solutions to today's challenge problems. Until next time, stay safe.